हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू एम एस क्लासेस लेट्स स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन फिफ्थ ऑफ आई एस सी टू मैथ्स पेपर द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन शो दैट द फंक्शन एफ एक्स इज मोड ऑफ एक्स माइनस फोर वेयर एक्स बिलोंग्स टू कैपिटल आर इज कॉन्टिन्यूस बट नॉट डिफरेंशियबल एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर सो एज एफ एक्स इज गिवन एज मोड ऑफ एक्स माइनस फोर so for checking the continuity at x is equal to 4 we check the left hand limit first so for x tends to 4 negative put x as 4 minus h so as x tends to 4 h tends to 0 so after putting we are getting 0 similarly for right hand limit x tends to 4 h tends to 0 for x is equal to 4 plus h we get 0 and at x is equal to 4 we are getting 4 minus 4 is equal to 0 that means left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to limit fx at x is equal to 4 so fx is continuous at x is equal to 4 for checking the differentiability now for left hand limit h tends to 0 f of a minus h minus fa upon minus h so if you put and solve you are getting minus 1 and for right hand if you put f of a plus h minus f of 0 upon h into this you get 1 therefore left hand is not coming equal to right hand so fx is not differentiable at x is equal to 4 next verify the lagrange mean value theorem for this function in the interval 1 comma 3 so as the function is given x plus 1 by x in the closed interval 1 comma 3 so first here function is continuous in the closed interval and differentiable in the open interval so there must be a point c lying in between 1 comma 3 which will satisfy this condition so f dash x if you differentiate this you get 1 minus 1 by x square so at x is equal to c you get 1 minus 1 by c square f of a where a is 1 is 2 and f of b where b is 3 is 10 by 3 So if you put all these value into this and solve, you get c is equal to plus minus root three. Now as minus is not lying in between this interval, so we take c as root three. Next question: If y is e to the power sine inverse x and z is e to the power minus cos inverse x, prove that dy by dz is e to the power pi by two. So as y is e to the power sine inverse x. dy by dx would be e to the power sin inverse x into differentiation of sin inverse x which is 1 upon under root 1 minus x square similarly dz by dx is e to the power minus cos inverse x into differentiation of minus cos inverse x which will give us e to the power minus cos inverse x into 1 upon under root 1 minus x square because minus minus becomes plus now we have to find dy by dz which is dy by dx upon dz by dx So if you divide this with this, you get e to the power sine inverse x plus cos inverse x, and we know sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi by two. So we are getting e to the power pi by two. This is what we have to prove. Question seventh: A thirteen meter long ladder is leaning against a wall, touching the wall at a certain height from the ground level. The bottom of the ladder is pulled away from the wall. along the ground at the rate of 2 meter per second how fast is the height on the wall decreasing when the foot of the ladder is 5 meter away from the wall so here the ladder is lain the length of the ladder is given 13 meter so say the height is y and the base is x so it's given dx by dt that is 2 meter per second and we have to find the decrease in the value of y with respect to time when x is 5 meter Now, from the Pythagoras theorem, x square plus y square is thirteen square. So, at x is equal to five, we get y is twelve. So, if you differentiate this, you get two x dx by dt plus two y dy by dt. That is zero. So, here, if you take this to that side, two and two gets cancelled. We get minus dy by dt is equal to x upon y dx by dt. So, x is five, y is twelve, dx by dt is two. we get 5 by 6 meter per second that's our answer next question evaluate integration of x into 1 plus x square upon 1 plus x to the power 4 dx so if we assume 
x square as t and differentiate we get 2x dx is equal to dt so x dx we can replace with dt by 2 and x square with t we get 1 plus t upon 1 plus t square so if we integrate and if we open the bracket we get half integration of dt upon 1 plus t square plus t into dt upon 1 plus t square if we multiply and divide with 2 we get half the integration of 1 upon 1 plus t square is tan inverse t if you assume this as x you get 2t dt as dx so 1 by x is log x so log 1 plus t square plus c so if you replace t with x square again we get half tan inverse x square plus half log 1 plus x to the power 4 plus c evaluate mod of x plus 3 from minus 6 to 3 now if we see that function is negative from minus 6 to minus 3 that's why we write minus x plus 3 and the function is positive from minus 3 to 3 so that's why we have written as positive x plus 3 so if we integrate x plus 3 with minus sign we get x square by 2 plus 3x similarly x square by 2 plus 3x from the given limits and if we substitute these values here and solve we get 45 by 2 that's our answer Solve the differential equation dy by dx that is x plus y plus 2 upon 2 x plus y minus 1. Now if we assume x plus y as v so 1 plus dy by dx is dv by dx so that dy by dx we can write it as dv by dx minus 1. So dv by dx minus 1 that is v plus 2 upon 2v minus 1 here we have replaced x plus y with v. So if you take minus 1 to that side and solve, we get dx as 2v minus 1 upon 3p, 3v plus 1 into dv. Now if we integrate on both sides and if we divide this with that, we get 2 by 3 minus 5 by 3 into 1 by 3v plus 1. So after integrating it, we get 2 by 3v minus 5 by 3. This is log 3v plus 1 upon 3, that is x plus c. So if you replace v with x plus y that would be our answer next question bag a contains four white balls and three black balls while bag b contains three white balls and five black balls two balls are drawn from bag a and placed in bag b then what is the probability of drawing a white ball from bag b so here if you see bag a contains four white and three black and bag b contains three white and five black so two balls are drawn from bag a and placed in b so for case 1, both white balls are drawn from bag A. So we can find the probability 4C2 upon 7C2. Like this is the probability of drawing the white ball. From bag B, we get 4C2 upon 7C2 into 5 by 10. Now the second case can be the both black balls are drawn from A and white ball from bag 2. So that required probability would be 3C2 upon 7C2 into 3 by 10. And the third case, when we draw one white and one black ball, so the required probability would be this. So if we add all three cases, we get our answer. Solve the following system of linear equation using matrix method. So we have been given with three equations. So let's solve. So let's assume 1 by x as a, 1 by y as b, and 1 by z as c. So if we put these values back over here, we get these three equations. So you know, ax is equal to b, where a is the coefficient of these three equations in the matrix form. x is a, b, c and capital B is the constant. So x is a inverse b. So how to solve a inverse? So here, we first find the cofactors of each and every element then take the transpose so that that gives adjoint of a so a inverse is 1 by mod of a into adjoint of a so mod of a is minus 4 and this is what the adjoint of a we have got now if you put this value back into this so a inverse into b and if we solve we get a b and c as 1 3 and 5 so that x y and z would be 1 1 by 3 and 1 by 5 respectively Next question, the volume of a closed rectangular metal box with a square base is 4096 cm cube. 
The cost of polishing the outer surface of the box is rupees 4 per centimeter square. Find the dimensions of the box for the minimum cost of polishing it. So here we have taken a rectangular box with the square base of side A and A and the height B so that the volume can be written as A square B which is 4096 and the area is the total surface area which is twice of A square plus 2AB. So now we can find the total cost because the cost for the 1 cm square is given as 4 rupee. So for the total area it would be 4 times of this area. So that the cost which is assumed as y which is 8a square plus 16ab. So if we replace b we get 4096 upon a square here. So that y is coming this. Now if we differentiate y with respect to a we get 16a minus 65536 upon a square. Now if we put it equal to 0 and solve we get a as 16. And to check whether it is minima or maxima we differentiate it again. Now if we see the whole thing is coming positive at a is equal to 16 that means that is minimum at a is equal to 16. And we can find the dimension b after putting the value of a as 16 into here we get a square b is equal to 4096 so b is coming 16 centimeter so the dimensions are 16 centimeter 16 centimeter and 16 centimeter so this is the case when we get the minimum cost find the point on the straight line 2x plus 3y is equal to 6 which is closest to the origin so here we have taken a point say alpha comma beta on this line so that this point would satisfy the equation which is 2 alpha plus 3 beta is equal to 6. So from this we can get alpha. Now we can find the distance from the origin using the distance formula which is alpha minus 0 square plus beta minus 0 square under root that is equal to d or d square if you remove the square root. We can assume d square as y so that if we differentiate y after putting the value of alpha here we get dy by d beta that is this is equal to 0 so that we can get the value of beta and if you put this value over here we can get the value of alpha and how to check whether it is minima or maxima we just double differentiate this equation and if we differentiate that again we get 13 by 2 which is coming positive hence it is minimum so these are the points which is closest to the origin 12 by 13 comma 18 by 13 now next question evaluate integration from 0 to pi x 10x upon secant x plus 10x dx. So say this is our first equation if we use the property and replace x with pi minus x we get 10 pi minus x upon secant pi minus x plus 10 pi minus x. So if we solve and add these two equations we get pi 10x upon secant x plus 10x that is 2i because x and x gets cancelled. Now if you take pi out and if you multiply and divide with secant x minus 10x we get secant square minus 10x square in the denominator which is 1. Now 10x into secant x minus 10 square x that is 2i by pi. So integration of secant x 10x is secant x from 0 to pi. 10 square x that is 10x minus x. How to get? 10 square x can be written as secant square x minus 1. Now secant square x, the integration of secant square x is 10x, integration of 1 is x, that is 2 by pi i. So if we put the limits into these two, we get minus 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 plus pi that is 2 by pi i. So that minus 2 plus pi that is 2 by pi i, so that i is pi by 2 into pi minus 2. Next question, given three identical boxes a, b and c. Box A contains two gold and one silver coin. We assume gold as G and silver as S while doing the numerical. Box B contains one G and two S and box C contains three S. A person chooses a box at random and takes out a coin. If the coin drawn is of silver, find the probability that it has been drawn from the box which has the remaining two coins also of silver. So this is what like given to us. So the probability of finding out A, B and C that is 1 by 3. So we can find the probability of the silver when A has occurred. Probability of silver with respect to C and with respect to B. 
Now using the bias theorem, if you put all these values, we get 3 by 4. Determine the binomial distribution where mean is 9 and standard deviation is 3 by 2. Also find the probability of obtaining at most one success. So here n into p is 9 where sigma is 3 by 2. So if we use the formula and solve, we get n as 12. Similarly, here if we put the values into this, we get this. Section B, question 15th first. If A vector and B vector are perpendicular vectors and mod of A plus B is 13 and mod of A is 5, find the value of mod of B. So here as the mod of A vector plus B vector is 13, so if we like use the dot product or if we square on both sides, we get A vector plus B vector whole square that is A square plus B square plus 2A dot B. Now since the angle between A and B is 90, so we can write cos 90 which is 0. A plus B, the magnitude is given 13. For A is 5 and B we have to find. So after solving this, we are getting B as 12. Find the length of the perpendicular from origin to the plane r vector dot 3i cap minus 4j cap minus 12k cap plus 39 is equal to 0. So the equation is given. So if we write in terms of x, y and z, we get this equation. Now we use the formula and put the value of x1, y1, z1 as 0. We get 3 units. Find the angle between the two lines 2x is equal to 3y is equal to minus z and 6x is equal to minus y is equal to minus 4z. So here we can find the direction ratio from the two and if theta is the angle between the two lines we can use this formula and put the value. So after solving this we are getting 0 that means theta is pi by 2. Next question. If A vector is i cap minus 2j cap plus 3k cap, B vector is 2i cap plus 3j cap minus 5k cap, prove that A vector and A cross B are perpendicular. So here we can find A vector cross B vector from the determinant formula and if we find the dot product between A and A cross B, we get 0. That means A vector and A cross B are perpendicular. Find the equation of the plane passing through the intersection of the planes 2x plus 2y minus 3z minus 7 is equal to 0 and 2x plus 5y plus 3z minus 9 is equal to 0 such that the intercepts made by the resulting plane on the x-axis and the z-axis are equal. So here this is the way like how we do. So equation of plane passing through the intersection of the planes, we can write this equation plus k into this that is equal to 0. So if we solve and if we write in this way, we can get x upon this plus y upon in terms of k plus z upon in terms of k. So here x and z intercept are equal. So after solving this, we can solve for k. Find the equation of lines passing through the point 2, 1, 3 and perpendicular to these two lines. So let equation of line passing through 2, 1, 3 is this. So here, this is the way like how we can solve. So as you can see, we can get the equation of two lines. Now the last question of section B, draw a rough sketch and find the area bounded by the curve x square is equal to y and x plus y is equal to 2. So the one is parabola and second is the line. So this is the shaded region, the area which we have to find between these two curves. So now if we find the common intersection point, we are getting x as minus 2 and 1. So it means from minus 2 to 1, we can take this equation minus this equation. So that means y of the straight line minus y of the curve that gives the required area. So if we integrate this, we get 2x minus x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 from minus 2 to 1. And if you put the values, we get the answer 9 by 2.